Cause like a winter Wherever you are around the world, welcome and thank you for joining us. This is the Circle of Insight Show, a show about everything in human behavior. And I am Dr. Carlos. With me today is Dave Meltzer. He's the author of this wonderful book called Connected to Goodness. Manifest everything you desire in business and life. Dave Meltzer is a CEO at Sports One Marketing, a Warren Moon enterprise, and oversees all day-to-day -day business operations at the firm. At Sports One Marketing, David's sports and entertainment industry contacts are instrumental in exploiting his clients' marketing and endorsement potential, enabling him to secure lucrative and diverse business opportunities for all his clients. Prior to this, as CEO of Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, David, along with Lee and Warren Moon, negotiated over $2 billion in sports and entertainment contracts. In addition to athlete representation, LSSE served as creative and technical consultants on movie and television projects such as Jerry Maguire, Any Given Sunday, For the Love of the Game, HBO, and his Arliss. In his over 15 years as a professional, David has managed processes and practices, including the creation and implementation of strategies and tactics for beginning and scaling a business, recruitment and management, sponsorships, endorsements, go-to market planning and execution. David is considered one of the pioneers within the ever-changing online and interactive business channel development. Let's welcome to the circle, David Meltzer. Welcome. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I barely breathed on that one. All right. <laughs> you Woo. got it out. Thank you. That's fabulous stuff. Well, we got so much to cover, but before we get to that, I want to learn a little bit more about you. So where did you come from? You know, I uh, was born in Ohio, moved out to San Diego when I was young, went to college in L.A. I went to a college that let me play football, so there wasn't very many. I went to Occidental College. <laughs> That's a good school. A very good school and a great experience. And then I went to Tulane for law school and uh, got out and got into the technology world from law school. So I was one of the first people at Westlaw legal research online. Despite my mom wanting me to be a real lawyer, uh, I convinced her <laughs> that the internet was going to be a huge thing. And I was blessed and became a, a millionaire in my 20s, got involved in technology. Fabulous. Uh, and uh, through Accenture and Every Path, which is a wireless proxy server company in the Silicon Valley, we raised about $169 million. I became CEO of the world's first convergence device when I was 32. Convergence a convergence device, device. exactly. <laughs> Back then in 1999 and 2000, a convergence device was a smartphone. They converged data with voice. Wow. And so Samsung got into the, the space and hired me for the PCE phone. And the irony of that job was the reason it didn't do well, the PCE phone, was it was too big and too expensive. <laughs> those are the ones that are the big ones that they used to have like in the little windows suitcase? ce yeah oh, it, and uh, <laughs> it had a full windows browser on it uh, we won best of comdex and uh i i upped my ante on the financial side and retired in my 30s and wow. that's what i wrote the book about i ended up i owned a golf course and properties and i ended up losing uh losing all my money uh, because i got away from the principles of my life and wow. uh, ironically i my wife, who didn't leave me, surprisingly, told me, why don't I go back and codify what made me me? And so I went back and created an outline of three pr imagination principles and three action principles. Uh, the philosophy in my book is that, uh, and you'll like this as a, the doctor you are, <laughs> that I believe that when you consciously think about what you want, it becomes a possibility. And then I take a pragmatic, imaginative process of making that possibility a probability by becoming inspired and being aware of what inspiration is. And then more on the pragmatic real action side, I take discipline, strategy, and awareness as action tools to make your probability a perspective. Your perspective is your reality. So I've created a system to take a possibility by thinking of something, becoming inspired, and making it a probability, and then taking action to make it your reality. And I followed my own advice and uh, met Lee Steinberg, who, who may or may not be on this show someday, uh, soon, <laughs> I hope. But Lee, a great mentor of mine, uh, reinvented myself as a sports guy. You know, I, I played football in, in college. I love sports. I just was born with this great genetic ability to be a great athlete. So I ended up being a, an agent instead or running <laughs> the agency for Lee. And uh, How did you meet Lee? 
this process. I, I dreamed, here, here's the interesting, I dreamed of being a sports agent, went to law school to be a sports agent. Oh, really? Tulane is a, an amazing sports law school. And through technology, ended up completely just regarding my education, except for I sold legal research, but and the dream of being a sports agent. When I learned this process and went back and realized pragmatically what to do, I started to dream about being a sports agent. I had a yeah. friend call me and said, would you like to represent me for a reality show, for this reality show with Magic Johnson called Showtime? Oh, and, wow. and we're gonna be negotiating with Lee Steinberg. Oh man, I was excited. I, I ju <laughs> just, I was gonna go back to work. I'd been offered a job in, in uh, the technology space again, and I was kind of disappointed and cautious about it. I w really wasn't excited. And here was this opportunity just to meet Lee. Within 48 hours of meeting Lee, I wasn't looking for a job. He offered me the chief operating officer position, and six months later, I became. You weren't the looking for anything. No, I think that helped oh, me. Wow. What also helped me with Lee was that my brother, my younger brother, went to Harvard, summa cum laude, who I thought was one of the most academic, academically brilliant people in my life. I met Lee, and they were twins. Just Lee's a little <laughs> older, so I could communicate effectively with Lee. Everything I said resonated with him. I understood how his mind worked, and I think we hit it off so well, and I little did I know that Jeff Morad had left. They had sold their baseball practice. Jeff Morad owned the Padres, and okay. he was a business partner with Lee. Uh, Jeff had left, and so he was looking for someone to be the operations guy, his new Jeff Morad, which was always the greatest compliment he gave me, was you remind me so much of Jeff Morad. And, That's a big uh, compliment. And still today, uh, Lee and I are, are, are close, and Warren and I, Warren's 35-year friend of Lee's. He's known him since high school. They went to the same high wow. school. And so we... Uh, I became the, the, uh, the CEO of Lee Steinberg and entered the inner circle <laughs> of sports. <laughs> and about five years ago, uh, Lee ventured off into other things and he had his, you know, his very public uh, personal issues which he was yeah. facing and we support him fully. But uh, Warren and I decided uh, we loved each other and we were going to form a business to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. And that's what we've been able to make. Sounds like a good recipe so. to make. Thank you. I'm going to take you back a little bit. Um, one of the things we're focusing on a lot are motivational stories, and you have a great story. And one of the things I want to find out is when you went, when you had that hard time, you lost everything you said, how did Dave Meltzer, what was he thinking? What was he thinking, and how did he get out of that stage and say, okay, my wife is right, i got to do this? Because I'm assuming he was probably depressed. You're, you're probably, <laughs> life didn't look good. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing was, unlike most people, I... I I had this shocking revelation because we had so much wealth, right? We lived yeah. in Rancho Santa Fe, Ferrari, Porsche, you know, you name it, golf course, that wow. we, we both were in denial, my wife and I. And when I pushed her so far with my actions that she, she wasn't happy, it hit me hard. So I never went through a long depression that first day when I realized I'm out of control, what I call a diver, I've lost my gratitude, I've lost my empathy, my forgiveness, I'm not empowered. I've entitled myself, which was so ironic because I've lived my life to empower others and even to empower others to empower others. And I became my own Justin Bieber. I became my own entitled athlete with millions of dollars. And that self-reflection was very difficult. But what helped me was her advice to go back and codify what made me me. So instead of sitting there wondering, she immediately got me focused on doing what principles I live by. And when I started thinking about the principles that made me a millionaire in my 20s, a multi-millionaire in my 30s, retired with everything I dreamed of, it became really, uh, uh, really apparent to me, shoot, I've lost myself. And the hardest part for me, which is different than a lot of people, is two, even when I was working with Lee, I was in it two, three years on recovery. Uh, you know, regaining my finances and my gratitude. The hardest part was I had all the accumulative effect of being a jerk. And so I had lawsuits and bankruptcy and all these things while I was doing the right thing. And so the universe was testing me. I kept saying everything will come in the right way at, at the perfect time. I know that if I follow my principles, everything will come back to me, even though the lowest time was when I was still on the rise. There, there, I bottomed out kind of with yeah. all my real life situations while I was rising up. And it was an interesting dichotomy. So I had to separate myself from the circumstances in which I didn't want and focus in on those in which I do want and believe that if I change the way I look at things, the things I look at change. And now here I am, nine years later, 
never happier. I have four children. I have oh. great meaningful relationships in my life. The financial side has never been more abundant or successful. The business that I've created is one in which is flourishing and growing. And so I wanted to share that with everyone. In fact, I've written four books. This one is a bestseller. I'll show it to you again. <laughs> so they, uh, <laughs> they're holding off the release of the second book, which is uh, aptly named The Way to Happiness. And my third book will be about the ego, saying getting out of your own way. Hmm, uh, that's and, a good one. <laughs> and my fourth one, motivated by Lee, hopefully I can say it, is, is called Don't Do Business with Dicks. It's about surrounding yourself with the right people and the right ideas, which will be a great airport seller. <laughs> that would be. And that's the great thing. I mean, we've, we've talked to champions and athletes, and they, and they have a similar mentality because you have the mentality of a champion, somebody who doesn't wallow when the situation goes bad. You didn't let it overtake you, and you actually out, out, uh, outdid it, and over, overcame it. That's amazing. Thank you. That's Thank fabulous you. stuff. Um, so now what I want to do is find out, we know how you got into the business. There's got to be a story or two in there. Well, what was your first client? Do you remember your first client? So my actual first business deal was Lee, Lee had asked me to handle bringing the Rams back to L.A. Ooh. <laughs> and we had John Shaw, Georgia Frontier's kids. Uh, we had Franklin Financial. We were going to purchase the Rams for $900 million and bring them back. Lee was on, before they left, Lee was on the Save the Rams, uh, the president of Save the Rams. And when they left, he was distraught. That was his team. And uh, so that was the first deal. And Lee, who, who wasn't available, he was dealing with some of his issues. I you know, had learned through my career uh, now, to be honest, and I told Lee, I said, well, my first project, Lee, I'm over my skis. I said, I, I really, I need your help. I don't know what to do. And that's when Lee gave me that famous phrase, don't negotiate to the last penny, always be fair, and don't do business with dicks. And uh, he said, Dave, you do those things, three things when I'm not around, regardless of the size of the opportunity, we'll always be okay. And he was absolutely right. And what that basically says is surround yourself with the right people and the right ideas. That one must have been a very emotional deal, too. Oh, very. And, and cities hate losing teams. Yeah, and we're and ironically, everything comes back around. Warren and I are working on the project with Carson right now and oh, bringing right. the Chargers and the Raiders and the Rams, everyone to L.A. And it's all high, highly complex, all three of them. Holy uh, cow. So uh, it's very, very, because Cronky's involved with his project in Inglewood and then the Chargers and Raiders want to come to Carson. Uh, but oh, it's funny, we talk about, you know, I negotiated $2 billion in contracts. You know, nowadays, you know, I, I thought to my publicist, I better change that because just the stadium deal is $1.7 billion alone. <laughs> $1.7 <laughs> for the one in Carson? Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. Exactly. Well, let me ask you this. I know um, you've dealt with personal athletes, some big names. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you look for? I mean, is there a client you would say, hey, I can't touch you? Or, or Absolutely. Like, oh. In fact, I learned it from Lee, not to give him... Too much credit, but he deserves it. He really does. Lee created the basis of our evaluation or qualifications of, we believe we hired our clients. They didn't hire us. So he had one criteria that was the, the proof all of all of our athletes. He asked them to create a foundation that was they were passionate about and give back to the community a certain percent. If they would not agree to do so, we would not represent them. And the philosophy, which I agree 100% with, is if they weren't enlightened enough, that they were gonna share their abundance and help other people, then everything else, they wouldn't be loyal to us, the, the money would always be in it, they, they, they would never get it and their character would not be aligned with ours. They weren't the right people with the right ideas. And so mm -hmm. that's why Lee Steinberg created legacies like Troy Aikman, Steve Young, mm -hmm. Bruce Smith, Thurman Thomas, Warren Moon, just to name a few. He had eight wow. first picks in the draft, but he, it's just not that he represented the best players in the league. And he had a $100 million baseball practice as well, Ramirez, Sabathia, and all of those guys, which he sold to Legacy. But the key wow. to him was he took these great athletes and made them great men. Great men who now have foundations, careers after they play, you never see them in the news for anything other than what they're doing for our society to be role models and empower other people to be happy, gra gracious, and empathetic. That's a fabulous idea. Fabulous idea. It's and you guys brilliant. do the same thing over here. Yeah, we copied Sports it. One. Yeah, go, my, my tagline, which is getting famous, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun, is stolen from Lee's ideas and <laughs> created a, a pragmatic tagline for it. That's fabulous.
Welcome to Autolante. This is Autolante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4450. A lot of time we don't even know what's wrong with us and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you. Now, have you ever had a client where it turned on you, where they're, they're, things look good in the beginning and all of a sudden, hey, what happened here? Absolutely. You know, and the most recent was uh, my favorite initial client, which is uh, uh, Myron Roll, who won the Rhodes Scholarship. Okay. Myron Roll uh, graduated in three years, All-American from Florida State. We thought he would be a number one pick. We encouraged him to go to Oxford and take his Rhodes Scholarship and then come back to the NFL. That's kind of rare, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Wow. And what I thought was, here's the ultimate client. This is a guy that gets it for us. He's going to be so easy. But what happened was, once again, uh, he was young. You know, he, you become their girlfriend, their boyfriend, their babysitter, their parent, all these. And you still have all these other relationships to deal with. And unfortunately, Myron ran a 4.740. And it's, 4 .7. And Myron took accountability, but his family won. They went to blame, shame, and justification. I finally had to awaken the family. They were all M's, six boys. For the, for the Roll family, and I had to tell them on the phone, I said, let me just give you perspective why Myron's not going to be a first-round draft pick anymore. I ran faster than that, and I was a Division three football player. So you can imagine we're going to have a little bit of issue trying to sell oh, Myron shit. to the team. Now, Myron was drafted in the sixth round, played on the practice squad for Tennessee. He's now in med school. He wants to be a brain surgeon. Good for so him. everything happens in the right way at the perfect <laughs> time, and he is a, still one of the most wonderful people that I've ever met. But as far as a football client, my hopes and expectations were here. And unfortunately, his football career was one that was more lackluster than I anticipated. It's a better ending, I guess, than oh, it could have been. And he'll be, I think he'll be a politician someday. Oh, really? Oh, he is an Adonis. He is genius. And he is <laughs> honest. And I, he has my vote right now for president. <laughs> and Obama went to my college, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. So, when you, we got the criteria for choosing athletes. We, we've discussed some athletes that you have lost. Um, anything, I mean, how would I phrase this? What, are the, what do you see compared to today? You've been in this business for, what, 25, 30 years? Yeah, around, around. around technology and then sports for the last decade, so yeah. Do you see a change in the athlete's mentality? I've spoken to other athletes uh, in the past, uh, former champions, uh, baseball players and football players, and they said, it's not the same, Carlos, and it was 30 years ago. You make so much money, there's so much popularity, there's so much going on. What do you see that's different for these guys now? Uh, two things. One, it's a business. The reality of the money, the reality of the TV contracts, the reality of the endorsements and sponsorships make it clear that this is a business. And they're treated as associates more than these heroes. Really? Yeah. So Interesting. Th that's the number one thing. The, the second thing, which is more impactful, is communication. So. All the things that go on in sports today were worse 20 years ago. The problem was, or the problem today is, is that everyone holds access to the universe. We all in our hand <laughs> can hold up a phone and catch somebody in a human moment and take it out of context. These guys are <laughs> incredible people. The majority of them help their families, the, the, the community, and because we have these phones, and the ability to tweet our emotions immediately. For example, when Warren was young, if he got aggravated, he may say something back at a reporter, or he may say something to a friend without the risk of someone putting it on tape, putting it up to TMZ, Ooh. out of context. <laughs> you know, th these are human things. You and I, or I'll speak for myself, I've gotten mad, and I would hate for someone to have hold have a, hold a camera to me every day in my office when I'm scolding my publicist for not telling me something, sure. or, right, and making me look in a certain way out of context. My wife could end me right now. Oh, and my whole entire family. <laughs> <laughs> so I think those two things: realizing that this is a business, 
And then secondly, that we are constant. We've, we've sold our privacy for, for all of that money because it is impossible to, to have a private life. And so that's why these athletes, you know, Tiger Woods is one who I know real well and, and other entertainers who create these compounds and they bring everything to them, right? Their, their food, their drink, their family, their friends. Everything stays on the compound where they really? don't have. And I, I've gone to parties with very famous people where you check your phone be, because they do not want pictures really? and videos thinking. Yeah. Wow. Shoot, that's amazing. <laughs> Let me ask you this then. Uh, you have to be kind of like you said, you have a dad, a babysitter, or whatnot. So that's a really different world. And you must be sweating bullets when you have a new client, big bucks. He's on TV. You're, you're going... You must be watching them like a hawk, or do you guys do prep these guys? So yeah, there, there's there's prep and training, and that's one of the things Lee was exceptional at. He spent more time on what they should do off the field than worrying about their contract. He knew that if he created an entity, a legacy, that everybody would want that and would raise the value. For example, he knew if we were giving back to the community with the foundation, when it came time to negotiate the second contract, that it actually would raise the value because the team would be afraid to lose that player because of public sentiment. So there, <laughs> there's these great... That's powerful. Yeah, there's these wow. great things. So uh, we don't still today mm -hmm. worry uh, about any of our clients because they're empowered to speak their mind. I mean, there's very simple rules, like for example, a young guy that we consult with in transition services, we may suggest one, hold off on getting married until you're done playing, two, take half your money, put it away uh, into an annuity, and when you're done playing and you've lost half your money, here you'll have your money and a whole nother life, because there's enough money to lose half of it, don't lose it all. So we, we have some simple ways of helping. Is that true though? I mean, do a lot of athletes, we know you hear that in 2020, we hear that on news. Is it true, do a lot of them really lose their money? Those statistics are underestimated. Underestimated? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Here, here's the problem, and, it, and, mm. and, and I had it almost, you know, I had it occur to me is that you live at a certain level, you think that the income, and it's worse for them, right? I, I'm a businessman, so if I fall down, I can get up. Sure. My career is only gonna get better as I get older as a businessman, because I get better at what I do. As a player, Pretty much from the time you're 25, you, you get worse physically. That's, right. That's a good point. Right? We go up and then down, and, and there's only so long you can play. Well, what happens is we get married too young. We may have a few extra kids along the way, right? Uh, we also, we live at a certain level where we're helping our families. We're giving away, giving away. And pretty soon, the income stops. We might get a divorce, and, you know, statistically, when the income stops, divorces happen. And we're stuck being judged at our highest income level. And now we're paying off a lump sum. Oh, and then we have the houses and the cars. And we want to maintain, our ego wants us to maintain the yeah. level of success that we had while we're playing. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon there's only so many dollars available. And so 75% of the players, regardless of how much they made and how long, within now 10 to 12 years, uh, I've lost their money. After their career's over? After their career's over. Wow. So football, was, that's a big one, too, because they yeah. don't have very long careers. Exactly. And that is actually football numbers. I apologize. Oh, football numbers. Those, those are because they play an average of two and a half years. Two and a half years? Yeah. Whoa. Wow. That's that's short. Yeah. It doesn't make the two million a year seem like a lot of money, does it? No, it really doesn't. It doesn't. So it really is important. That's a smart thing you guys do. It's really important to focus on that business aspect for them. To put the money in the annuity, to make sure they get the endorsements, and to do all that. Yeah, and build a brand, build a profile, wow. do the right thing. Be another Lee saying, I, I'm going to ruin Lee's interview. I'm going to give him all your lines. Yeah, you Be kind to your interview. future self. <laughs> Be kind to your future self. That's a, a mantra that we have all of our clients and employees. Wow. So think of yourself in the future. What are you going to look like, kind of, and be nice to that guy? Yeah, exactly. And uh, in Warren, he, he has some great advice. He, he says, surprise people. Think about when you go to a restaurant, don't be the guy they anticipate you to be. Oh, interesting. You know, be a mensch. Be a mensch. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, that's exactly the advice we give. There's a couple stories out there that I've seen, and um, I want to get your opinion on it. it you know, it's up to you how, how you want to say it, but there's one story that's really fascinating me over the last 20 years. Here's a guy, and I'm teasing you guys, here's a guy that's got up, became boxing champion of the world at the youngest age. He was an amazing guy. Shoom, starts dropping, goes to jail, encounters some incredible issues. Big problems. A guy comes around again <laughs> somehow, and now he seems to be coming out. Into the light light, we know Tyson, is yeah. what I'm thinking. Good and friend of mine. How do you, I mean, what, what do you do with that? Perfect. It's an amazing story. He's a good friend of mine. 
And I actually last week was uh, in in Las Vegas with Mike oh, great. Uh, and his wife. And what Mike and and, and I've helped have conversation with Mike is two things that he's learned: hmm. gratitude. And you know, he lost his child as well. His uh, his four year old that. daughter was on the treadmill and had a terrible accident, and she oh, hung gosh. herself um, on accident. Oh, uh, and so you know. Yeah variety of circumstances mike knows he's not the victim he he could he could have made himself the victim he makes it his story and in fact that's how he rebounded was telling his story right on the one man show i saw that it was a fabulous fabulous story. right and he was oh, he was raw right he was exposed yeah. but mike learned that number one gratitude gave him perspective no matter all the things that happened he had to have gratitude and, and that was what it was going to, because he's an exceptional human being. You don't become that great of a champion without having attributes of, of a champion. And he knew that he had to now regain his gratitude and then his empathy, uh, which all of us have to have. Empathy is not sympathy. Right? I can't feel bad enough to make you feel good, sick enough to make you well, or poor enough to make you rich. But empathy is powerful. It's forgiveness. And, and Mike and I have discussions, both of us, that the hardest part of our revival was to forgive ourselves. Because we can only give what we have. And the more forgiving we are, the happier, the more harmonious and peaceful we are by having that forgiveness. And so what Mike Tyson has now is he has peace and he has gratitude and he has empathy and he lives his life in that way and he is making, as you know, luckily I am, we, we are paralleling careers and I hope mine parallels as far because he is making a serious comeback. His really businesses is. are doing well. Yeah. His TV, he has a show, a, a, an international show that he sold. He's oh, surrounding wow. himself with the right people and the right ideas. Uh, you know, the producer of the Pacquiao fight is in business with him. Oh, wow. He also is in a venture with us um, for some unbelievable Past. You guys, yeah, we, uh -oh. we, I'm going. That's why I'm going to Las Vegas. After we speak, we have the licensed and uh, hid, hidden videos that Mike was involved with of a famous artist who is now passed away, and we have a concert and live video with Mike Tyson, oh, and and we are going to like Mrs. Seuss. You know how they come with the new Dr. <laughs> Seuss book. Oh, well, they did. Yeah, I didn't know she that. just pre-sold it. And I have a four-year-old. Yeah, seventeen dollars and fifty cents pre-pre-pre-sold on the Amazon. Over a million copies right now. A million already. She found an. She has actually two new books. She's launching one of them right now. So we're gonna mirror that Jeez. with this great artist in Mike Tyson, and I, I think you'll find Mike Tyson will, won't even remember who Don King is and what he did to him. Oh, he's another one. <laughs> That's for another show, I think. It's a whole a whole series, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he's not uh, one of your fans, that's for sure. <laughs> no, that's great. I really like Mike Tyson when I saw that movie um, with uh, Spike Lee that he did. Mm -hmm. uh, the One Man Show, I think it was called. Yeah. Fabulous. And you really tell it was genuine. Yeah, he seemed to really overcome it. And uh, that was great stuff, great stuff. Dave, I can't thank you enough for being here. This is so much fun. Learning so much from you in this industry because it's really, a lot of people don't see it from behind the scenes. They don't realize the complications, the complexity of human behavior and all the interactions you have to do. Fabulous stuff. Um, but you get the fastball question. Yes. So it's still coming. If you could have picked any athlete in the last hundred years, who would they want to represent? Oh, wow. Any athlete, uh, it would be Tiger Woods. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think, you know, here you have honor. African African American who changes the face of golf. And the reason is not because of the successes although that have been really fun and because I've represented the greatest athletes, yeah. right? And I'm still with them. I, I, I market the Pro Football Hall of Fame. These are the greatest ever. But what, what I would like is to represent him because I think that I could help facilitate him being the greatest golfer, not only again, but of all times. Because he's in his own way right now. And I believe that if I was representing him, that his brand, his profile, that some simple pieces of advice is, uh, you know, Bensey Glenn is my player development, 11 years in the league. He's close friends with Tiger. I've had some conversations, but, but that's the guy that out of all time, I, I think I could have the most impact on, who also would have the most impact on everyone in the world. And so I think we've limited Tiger Woods of creating a message or empowering others to empower others, and I'd love to have that opportunity. I think he'd he be a smart man to join with you guys. No <laughs> doubt about that. By the way, I want to show you this. I did get a free copy of the Connected to Goodness. Highly recommend to get it. And I got a free shirt. Can't beat that. Sports One Marketing. There it is. Right there. So, Dave, thank you so much again for being on The Circle. I truly appreciate it. It's fantastic learning My this stuff. 
Where do we get more information about you guys? You know, we have sportsonemarketing.com. I also have started the MeltzerMission.com, and it's a 30-day gratitude challenge. You'll like uh, this, Doc. Yeah. I believe that I can change your life in 30 days with two simple words. Thank you. If you say your think thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up, mm. in 30 for 30 straight days, because it has to get into your subconscious, it has to become a habit, but you will become a grateful person and your world will change. I speak around the world now and I have thousands of people emailing me. The simple, I, I found it to be the easiest way to change your life and it just empowers people to be happy. So please, if you, if you can, come to themeltzermission.com, join the 30 day gratitude challenge, change your life, Happy people make more happy people and help everybody. Thank awesome you. Awesome stuff. MeltzerMission.com. You want to do it? I'm going to do it. So I recommend you do it. Is this guy a fabulous or what? Wonderful person. Sports One Marketing, definitely the place to go. Remember, our motto is simple, everyone. Wherever there's psychology involved, even in the sports world, we're going to be there. See you next time.